Thank you for the introduction. That was, that was a very nice introduction for our work. So, <clears throat> so my name is Do Young Lee from the UNIST at South Korea, and uh, I am happy to introduce our work about the designing socially acceptable hand-to-face inputs. So current mobile head-mounted displays are quite amazing with a high-quality screen and high performances. Also, because they are getting lighter and smaller, we can easily imagine that these, these will be applied to our daily life in the near future. Then how can you control these devices? So we can find various ways of using it. So for example, you can use the additional touchpad devices or touchpad on the temple, or the simply you can put your arm on the mid-air to make a comment. So although they are works reasonably well, but they have uh, some problems like it can be cumbersome or it can have uh, some limited input area or, or it can cause some fatigue. So many researchers are working on the other types of the interaction surface like own body. So in the sense skin, they leverage the deformation of the skin of the, uh, uh, for the interaction and in the more than touch, they try to understand how user use the skin as an input surface. Although these are about the smart watches, we can get some ideas like touches to, touches to the body are expressive and easily accessible. And those benefits can be extended to the hand to face input. So it's easy to access and usually there are no garments unlike the other body parts and it's proximate to HMD. So mapping between the control and the content on the screen are more understandable to the users. So for, for example, upward on the cheek should be the same with the upward on the screen, right? So, and even the touches to the face is quite common and unobtrusive behavior. So from the previous research, we found that it happens 15 times per hour up to 54 times per hour. So main researchers are already working on the own face input, like the touching on the ear or deformation of the cheek or the touching on the hair. So because the face are quite a resting place, they are uh, they all concerns about the social acceptability. But figuring out which face size or the which hand action is socially acceptable is the remains as uh, difficult or the unclear. So we need more the structured method to assess those things. So to to deal with the, those questions, this only work is the those kind of the steps. So they gather the user's idea on hands to face input and based on this research, they designed some input techniques and they evaluated how the comfortable each gestures are. So as a research, they gathered many knowledges about the hands to face input. However, because they checked social acceptance at the last, last stage, it was difficult to get the general ideas to design a socially acceptable hands to face input. So we tried to expand this work in perspective of the socially accepted, uh, social acceptability. So we had uh, three steps and each were the elicitation study and case studies and the validation study. So in the elicitation study, we tried to understand the user's idea on hands-to-face input in a social setting. And in case studies, we developed two hands-to-face input prototypes based on the data and design strategies from the elicitation study. And we also did some basic performance studies. And at the validation study, we assessed those input techniques and the design guidance from the perspective of acceptability. So first, the elicitation study. So elicitation study is a user-driven gesture designing method. So in the typical elicitation study, we ask users to make a gesture for a certain task, like uh, taking a photo. And then they made a gesture, and they do evaluation for each gestures. And in here, we combined social acceptability message. So for instruction, we asked them to make a socially acceptable and subtle gestures. And for the gesture making, it was done in the BG Cafe, and there was a partner. Uh, so this pair of the subjects made a gesture in front of each other, and they evaluate the other's gestures in terms of the social acceptability and the subtlety. And by using this method, we could understand the, their strategies to make a uh, acceptable gestures. So we had uh, 10 pairs of the subjects and 16 tasks, and as a result, we got 320 gestures. So first analysis was done for the page size. So the left shows the research 
our research of the previous research, and the right one is ours. So in here, we saw more emphasis on the chin and the ear, and we saw the lower emphasis on the forehead. So we think this dramatic decrease in the forehead is might due to the, our social setting. So users might try to avoid the arresting face size like a forehead. And in terms of the acceptability, ear, neck, and temple was the high, and hair and nose was low. So this might suggest that away from the center of the face are appropriate for the, the hands facing gestures. So for the second analysis, we categorized 320 input actions based on the approaches to achieve social acceptability and subtlety. So two experimenter did, did this one based on the think or loud notes and the summary statistics and questionnaire data. So as a research, we got five strategies with 237 gestures in it, and the others were remained as unclassified. And also, we found some gestures contains multiple strategies, like 58 gestures fell into two strategies, and 11 into three, and three into four strategies. So these are the five design strategies we found. Uh, so the first three are about the hiding input actions. So miniaturizing was about making a small gestures, like really small taps. And obfuscating was about using hidden face size, like a bag of the ear or bag of the neck. And the screening was about hiding their gesture using the inputting hand, so doing like this. And next two are about the avoiding arousing attention, even if actions are observed. So camouflaging was about to the pretending on concise hand actions like swiping the sweat or the scratching. And the repurposing was about uh, using clear and explicit intentional actions like massaging the neck or the adjusting the hair or the making of some pose like this one. So based on the elicitation study research, we made two prototypes, which are the ear touch and some to face touch. So those were on the most common face size, where, which are the cheek, chin, and the ear. And we instantiate the design strategies we found, and we checked basic usability of the face touch gestures. For the ear touch, we applied these three strategies. So for the obfuscating, the, the ear was already hidden size, as it is somewhat away from the center of the face. And for the miniaturizing, we tried to make uh, small gestures and in case of the camouflaging, ear touch would look like a scratching, something like that, right? So this is our prototype. So we used backward facing camera on the side of the HMD. So from the camera input, we used skin color to segment the ear and the finger shape. And we did uh, some basic performance study. So in the tap task, we had uh, three techniques and the two target sizes and six positions. And we saw best results from the lift off and the large condition. So this is the example of the best condition. And the lift off is a technique that activated when the fingers are detached. So while touching, the users could see the cursor position. And the large target size was, a large target was the size of the one sixth of the whole ear length. So in the best condition, it shows 8.9% of LH, and it took 2.5 seconds. So previous research shows that 42% of LH for the same target size. So we think this is a kind of substantial improvement, and the conclusion, the optical tracking was a great way to detect touches on the ear. And as a future work, we will try to get a various gesture recognition, like a grasping or the mid-air gestures. Okay, for the some, some to face touch, we also applied these three strategies. So firstly, the touching with the some, uh, some snail naturally, uh, sorry, the touching with the some snail naturally screen the gesture with this hand. So also because the nail is quite small, the gestures become small too. So this is a kind of miniaturizing. And in case of the repurposing, it looks like a stinking pose as designers do. So this is our prototype. So we use three by three capacitive touch sensor array on the flexible PCB with a 0.3 millimeters of the 
stingless. So it was fit to some coffee shop well. So we connected this PCB from the wrist mounted device and it was wirelessly, wirelessly connected to the computer. So from the touch surface input, we extract the image moment of the biggest touch point to calculate the properties like the centroid. So in the tap task, we had the three techniques and two page sites, which are the chin and cheek, and the nine positions. And we saw best results from the dwell at the cheek condition. So this is the example of the, this best condition. And the dwell is a technique that activated when the cursor stays at a certain position for the 400 milliseconds. So while touching, users could see the cursor position. So in the best condition, it shows 21.5% of LH and it took 2.4 seconds. So although it has a somewhat high LH, we found the strong performance on the top left and top right tip locations. So both shows over 96% of the success, success rate. Also, when you think about only edges, the, we found that they were good at selecting each edges, especially for the top and both sides. Uh, but they failed to select specific position on that edge. So this is likely due to the softness of the cheek or the chin. So, so while tapping, people, uh, the whole edge might contact with the face because, because the nails are too small. So as a next, uh, as a future work, we will explore the edge detection design to increase the performance. So at the last step, we did the validation study. So in here, we try to validate social acceptability and subtlety of the input techniques and design guidance. And it has a similar form with the elicitation study. So it was done in a public affair and there was a pair of users, the, which is a gesture drawer and the observer, and there was a six pairs of the subject and three input techniques for the both devices. And we skipped the data in here because of the time, and I just like to sh show you the semi-structured interview re research. So we found some of our strategies work, were worked well. So these are the examples. So we could find the camouflaging it's like the, okay, this is similar to touching an earring, and I do this sometimes. And miniaturizing was uh, like the too small to notice. And obfuscating, like the, since the ear is on the side, it didn't matter. And the screening, so hiding my thumb let others to not notice this one. So, and the repurposing strategy did not emerge in the interview. So this is probably due to it's relatively weak embodiment in the two prototypes. So this is a summary of our work, and so we showed the, the elicitation study with a phase size the analysis and five strategy analysis. And in case study, we showed the two the, the prototypes and with the performance data, and in the validation study, we showed the interviews. And we skipped a lot of the data from our the paper, so if you are interested in our uh, this work, then please refer to our paper. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, thank you very much. So this is from the uh, Ulsan National Institute of Science and Technology. I thought UNIST maybe needs a little bit of explaining yeah. um, in South Korea. And uh, I'd like you guys to, to come up to the mic and uh, ask any questions that you might have. Yeah, Susanna, run. You can still make it. Yeah, it's yours. <laughs> so, um, thank you. My name is Susanne Boll, University of Oldenburg in Germany. Okay. Um, uh, you sort of looking at the title of your work, you're thinking of social acceptability. Yep. And you, of course, ask the individual on their impressions, how they feel, is it, can other people see it? Did you also look at actual experiences of bystanders because social acceptability comes not only what I think, how I look, but mm. also what other people really think you look when you have your thumb, uh, for example, at the chin or at the ear. Did you also look at bystanders' acceptability? Yeah, actually, that, that was why we used the partner method, mm -hmm. so because there are partner with the, the, the gesture drawer, so, and actually the, those two people are unknown each other before the study. 
So we think the partner can be a, the kind of the bystander, the role. But in the interviews, mm -hmm. like in the validation, it was you were just asking the person who used the gesture. Oh no, we, we asked to the the. Oh no, so this ah uh, sorry, so this interview was to the both of the. Both okay. Yeah, people. And did you look at any kind of metrics for social acceptability? So there's also in human computer interaction there's um, models describing a degree or a level of that. Did you already go into into so far, or you'd say this is just the beginning of understanding what is acceptable or not? Actually, it can be the kind of the beginning of the understanding of this, this kind of work. But actually, in the paper, we have uh, some data for the social acceptability mm -hmm. as some, some score. So, yeah. And how well were you doing in the score? Yeah, actually, the, I just skipped that one yesterday <laughs> because, the, because of the time. But mm -hmm. I saw that I have a many time in here. But yeah, uh, anyway. You yeah. got a minute. You can show it if you yeah, want, want to. So, uh, actually, the, the, that way to measure the kind of the acceptability was very similar to their, the previous the author's work. Mm -hmm. so, like we ask them about the in which location or in in front of whom are you comfortable mm -hmm. or the are you feel this is obvious or not for the sub subtlety so we ask that kind of things okay and, yeah. because it might be also different if i'm at home with friends yeah, or yeah, if exactly. i'm in my office space yeah exactly okay. at, uh, in the pub or the, in the street yeah, that kind of question thank you yeah um I was I was uh, struck by uh, you said uh, unintentionally we touch our face head up to basically every minute yeah you know, like 50 times an hour yeah. so that brings up the question if you find these gestures that are you know socially acceptable yep. they are probably also the ones that look very much like the things we do Anyway, right, just like you were saying, scratching your ear or touching your nose or... So what about unintentional triggering? Is there anything that you could recommend? If I have to design a system that mm -hmm. uses face touch, yep. what's your recommendation? How do I avoid designing a system that gets lots of false positives? Because every time the user scratches yeah, their ear, exactly. you know, they're sending a message or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That can be the problem of the, this kind of face touching or the or the own body touching interactions. And I think maybe we can give uh, some cues in the in the software, like the, this is time for the touching like that, or so that it's only actually actively looking for these gestures. Yeah. When when it's time to interact. Yeah. So, or so that sounds like it, you would use it rather. Not to like initiate something, yeah. like not send a new message, but rather now is the time where you need to make a decision. You know, take a call or reject a call. Is yeah, that... actually, the, our study was on the just only the, the performance study mm. for now. So maybe in the um, future work, maybe we can think about that kind of point. How, how can we activate the, our the real gesture and the not real gesture? <laughs> Okay, I got lots more questions, but we'll take those offline. Uh, can we ask the next presenter to uh, get set up and we can turn off the projection? All right, so this was, this was exciting. Um, and, and now, uh, for a little bit of a change in, in pace, 